It's another Sunday, which means it's another story. Story Sundays here on What's the Plot with me, Cameron, and my ever so lovely co host, Hannah. Today's story is about fraud, theft, theft of identity. It is about. <laughs> the story is that of the greatest imposter known to man, a man named. Fernando Fred de Mera. Why do you always pick stories with a name that's a confusion to pronounce? Ah, because that's short and then Fernando is just going to be Fred, isn't it? Let's be honest. Ah, oh, fair enough. Plus, it's not my fault. Some of the people with the most difficult names have the most interesting stories. Maybe it's something with what they're born with. Give your child an interesting name and they'll have an interesting story. Mm. Mm. One to remember the, the... future. One to remember for the future. Absolutely. Hannah. (laughs) (laughs) So, Fernando was the greatest imposter of all time. He stole people's identities in such a way which was mind-bogglingly impressive. He had a photogenic memory. So he could look at things and go, snap and then steal that information. He had charisma, the charm, in order to fool those around him. Wow. And that is the story of today. I'm going to eat you now. <laughs> so, Fernando Fred de Mera. He was born 1921 yeah. in Massachusetts. The year you started school. Shut up. <laughs> he was born into a wealthy family, okay. but then hit the Great Depression, oh. and his family become not Unwell. so wealthy. Yeah, so then he has to move to a poorer area. His father is the projection operator at the local cinematic experience. Ooh, the theatre. The, the movies. Oh, the pictures. Ooh. Those moving pictures. The big black and white. Oh, wow. Yeah, so we got to like go in and work with his dad. And So I've not found anything online that necessarily says, so this isn't proven that this is why he stole identities. But I just feel like if he grew up watching so many films, well, he probably got good at acting, right? Mm. He probably learned acting think. from them and wanted to, you know, pretend to be other people. When he was 16, he ran away to join a monastery to become a monk. Ah. For why? It seems as if throughout his life he wanted to achieve status, to be respected, to be respectable, which is what we'll see coming through this. And here's a great example. He runs away age 16 to become a monk. 1920s, religion is very respectable. Mm -hmm. So being a monk is very respectable. Two years, he gets transferred. Monks think he wasn't a good fit. So he gets transferred to kind of another monastery. And then two years later, he decides, I had enough of this monk Monk life. Monk life ain't for me. Monk life ain't for me. And he leaves to join the army. Now, age, quick maths, 20. He's now 20 years old. He's been a monk for four years. He runs away to join the army. When he joined the army, he instantly thought that he made a mistake. So he wanted to leave to join the Navy instead. Ah. But he couldn't. <clears throat> Why? Because you can't just, you know, join and go, eh, this isn't for me. And you've got to have credentials and certain, you know, training. Which his tent mate did. A man named Anthony. So this is when he steals his first identity. And he stole the identity of Anthony and joined the Navy instead. When he was there in the Navy, under his new pseudonym, he used to flick through these university catalogues in his free time, reading all the kind of bios of the professors. You know, it's going to become important in the future. So keep that that in mind. This is what he did in his free time. While in the Navy, Fred was accepted for medical training. He passed the basic course, but due to his lack of education, was not allowed to advance. So in order to get into medical school, he created a set of fake documents indicating he already had the college qualifications. Because he couldn't even get... He had to go to medical school to get the qualifications to become a medical officer or whatever he wanted to do. But he couldn't get into medical school without the college documents, without the college qualifications. But then he couldn't go back to college. So instead, he just said, well, I faked my identity. I might as well fake these um, papers saying I've got the qualifications so I can get to medical school. Why not? And he faked them, and then he thought, I did a really good job of faking this. 
So instead of going to medical school, he just faked the whole thing and just said, well, I'll just fake myself having the entire qualification. Dangerous, risky. Risky. But... When his falsified papers were discovered, he faked his own death and then oh. went on the run again. Cracker. But then he decides, you know what? Forget this whole medical, army, navy stuff. I want to become a teacher once again. See what I'm Noble. respectable. Being a monk, respectable. Being in the armor, the respectable. navy, respectable. Being a teacher, respectable. Respectable. Now remember, I said he was used to flip through all these university catalogues, and if you remember from the beginning, he had a photographic memory. Mm -hmm. Ching ching. So he picked one of the names from the book that he remembered, a Dr. Robert Linton French, who was a researcher at Yale. He acquired Yayo! fake papers, birth certificates, and such. All those kind of things you need to pretend to be someone. And then went on to become a professor under this new fake identity as Dr. Robert Linton. He did that for a little bit, got bored, moved on to move to LA to become a medical assistant. And got bored of that and moved on. He kept doing this. He was really There's a good. Theme. Yeah. Got bored, moved on. Really good at faking. People's identities. Not very good at longevity. Great actor. Not good at longevity. Got bored. He didn't really know what. He was trying to find his place. Mm, and he just kept moving on. Then he moved to Washington State to teach psychology. And the FBI captured him. This was the first time he's been... He's faked like five people so far. And this is the first time he's been caught doing so. And he only got caught doing so because in this town... Befriended the local the sheriff. The famous town of Washington. The famous town City. of Washington. Well, but like in his little yeah, yeah, suburban yeah, bit of it. His best mate was like the sheriff. Oh. So, you know, ooh, risky move. And they found out. Told the FBI, captured him, served 18 months in the Naval Disciplinary Barracks in San Pedro, California for desertion. Up on his release. He went back to his old Fernando identity oh, steal away. Fernando, like, you never go back, though. It was scoundrel, you know. And this time, he created a new identity, Cecil Hammond. And he enrolled in the Northeastern University, tiring of the effort and time needed to complete his law degree because he wanted to become a lawyer now. Oh, Once again, of course. status, right? He instead he just awarded himself the PhD and you know fake documents. He's great at doing Did it. Did he give himself a graduation ceremony? That's what I want to know. Absolutely, just sure. in his bedroom. Perfect. Why the hell not? Little hat and everything threw it up. Oh, got caught in the fan. <laughs> Went round, got no um, proof of that. Who knows? Now he was doctor, Doctor Cecil, Ooh, PhD, very nice. Check you out, mate. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. And then he took another teaching post as a uh, part of a Christian college. The Brothers of Christian Institute, 1950. What happened to being a doctor? Got no. bored, moved on. Got bored, moved on. No, he's like a doctor, like law doctor, and doctor um, and PhD yeah. doctor kind of thing. When he was at this Christian introduction brotherhood thing, he met and befriended a Canadian doctor called Joseph Cryer, who Yay. was moving to the US to set up a medical practice. Okay. Joseph. Joseph needed help with his immigration papers. Yeah, you're right. Fernando. Offered to help him. You need help with papers. Fernando's the Fernando man. Fernando is the man. So we gave all of his... Fernando the Mando. Fernando the Mando. Got all of his papers to help him fill out the form. And after the two parted ways, Fernando took all the copies of his papers and then moved up to Canada, taking his identity. Probably the easiest one he's done, right? Because yeah. Joseph just kind of gave him all his identity anyway. Mm -hmm. So pretty easy. And he was moving to the US. So. <laughs> he, knew he, he knew he wasn't in Canada. Whilst he was in Canada, under this new name, he approached the Navy with an ultimatum. Make me an officer or I'll join the Army instead. And they didn't want to lose a well-trained doctor. Oh, you wouldn't, would you? So his application was fast-tracked. And he, came, he became a commissioned officer during the Korean War. Mm. He first served at some place called like Standanovia, naval base, whatever. Boring, boring, boring. <laughs> Whilst he was there, he convinced other doctors to contribute to a medical booklet. He claimed that he was producing for lumberjacks living in remote parts of Canada. Okay. He was like, I'm making a booklet for lumberjacks who are remote and they can't get help. Oh. Do you want to fill in this with some doctor knowledge that you have about being a doctor? My little booklet. 
And then he would read that booklet and be like, mm, I'm a I doctor. know so much stuff there. I know some like doctory words and that. You know, that kind of stuff. With this booklet and the knowledge gained from his time in the Navy, he was able to pass successfully as Dr. Cryer. And in 1951, he was transferred to the ship's doctor on the destroyer HMCS, stationed off the coast of Korea. He was the on ship doctor. Something goes on, obviously, it's war, it's the Korean War. Someone probably is going to get hurt. A lot of the soldiers get brought in at the same time, loads of different injuries, right? And what he does is he's the doctor, right? So he's got to see to them. But he's not a real doctor. No. So he can't see to them. So what, instead, his plan, his big plan, he orders personnel to take those people who've got injuries to the surgery room. And he's like, prep them for operation. I'm going to go prepare myself. And then he runs back to his quarters, into his room, and starts flicking through. A lot like, of jack book. Yeah, well, just like textbooks, like mm. how to perform Open surgery for surgery. dummies. Yeah, and he's just like flicking through them all. Surgery books, yeah, surgery books. Speed reading them. Photographic memory, innit? So he's just like, let's remember this. And then he goes into surgery, and he starts performing surgery on them all. And there's like loads of people, and he's like, this man needs chest surgery. Okay, open heart surgery. I've got this. Page 23 on my book. And it's this other guy's like, he's got a leg issue. And he's like, we're going to amp amputate it. Here we go. Get the saw out. We're going to perform surgery. Finishes. 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 Finishes surgery. Not one person died. They all were successful surgeries. Very well. It was prestigious. Chef. Yeah. Surgeon's kiss. Some of the best surgery they had ever seen oh, wow. it was brilliantly done that leg amputated to perfection that chest the incision the surgery what he did to that was like a work of art so good in fact that then he got some kind of honor in like a newspaper oh really and then the real doctor yeah the one whose identity he was stealing the doctor's mother saw this and was like that That's ain't my son him. yeah so then she was like out in him. But he didn't get he didn't go to prison for this because they was like, No, we can't let this out, that we had this yeah. doctor who's not a doctor. Not a doctor. So instead they just boop, deported him back to America. Okay. After returning to America, there was news reports about his actions. So then he sold his story to Life magazine in nineteen fifty two. Got a did a little, little biography, didn't that? they? Yeah, a little expose in why not? Sold why his not? own story. Wow. If anyone knows your story better than you, then wow. Yeah. Nobody knows your story better than you, is what I meant to say. Exactly. So then he spent some time being himself. Oh. Um, well, that was boring. Fernando. Yeah, well, you know, he's got all this money uh, now, uh, book money, doesn't he? Uh, Selling his story, but he got a bit bored of being got himself. Bored, moved on. <laughs> got bored, moved on. Got bored. Moved on. This um, Fernando character, Probably. worst I've done so far. The Horrible. Awful. Worst. Then 1955 somehow acquired the credentials of Ben W. Jones and disappeared Jones. again. As Jones, he began working as a guard at the what's that, Huntsville Prison in Texas and was eventually put in charge of the maximum security wing. Which is crazy to think because he had sold his story and lived a, a short while as himself so. making money from his story. So he was well known. Yeah. And then he continued to do imposters. Imposters yeah. and stuff. It's like that, you know that Wolf of Wall Street guy? Yeah. The real one. I was gonna say what Leonardo? No, the real one, who then sold his story. Mm hmm It's like if he went back to doing that stuff, people yeah. be like, mm, mate. We know, know you. you were that guy trying to sell me this pen. That was you. Yeah. This is what he did. Yeah. Sold his story about Yeah, but it's not like nowadays, is it? It's not like someone can Google you. That being said, 1956, an educational program was provided for prisoners. It provided them with magazines. And one of those magazines was Life magazine. And they was like, that's our security guard. I, I know this fella. That's Mr. Jones. What's Mr. Jones doing in here? Jones. Jones. Yeah. He served a six-month prison sentence not, for you know, his actions. When he is getting caught and going to prison, he's not getting very big like sentences, is he? Yeah, and this only twice. For fraud. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Oh. After his release, he made several television appearances, including 
game show ones. You bet your life. You made a cameo in a horror film. And then he Couldn't died. Get an imposter for that. No. no. Died at age 60 due to heart failure and complications. Oh. I don't know why I feel sorry for that dude. From his diabetic condition, which led to both of his legs having to be amputated. I hope he told them how to do it so perfectly. Hmm. But here's the interesting bit. This is why I think his story is so cool. Is because he never, like you said, oh, I don't know why I feel sorry for him. Mm. But he never stole any money. No. He never hurt anyone. Could have. In fact, he saved people. Yeah, but he could have hurt someone. He only stole people's identity for status. Yeah. Like a lot of people, like like we watched that film about that, Philip Morris, I love you, Philip Morris. Oh, yeah, we did. When he was stealing people's credit card information. Mm. Or even, catch me if you can, he was like yeah, the stealing people. Game. Right, yeah. Everyone, you steal identity for money, right? But he was never doing that. He was always stealing people's identities as flight status, say, yeah. respect. And he could have done any one of these things that he did do. Like he was clearly clever enough to be a doctor. Yeah. If he can perform, if, if he can learn on a ship. about surgery. Um, whilst, that. yes, in yeah. the space of like 10 minutes. And then perform it to perfection. You're right. I'm pretty sure he could do it over the space of like however long medical school oh, is. Long. Like they're always complaining, right? Oh, it's so difficult being a doctor and that. He was like, snapshot, boom, surgery, done. Smashed it. Mm. So he could have done all these things. He just thought it took too long. He just thought it was easier to steal. Easier to fake his way there. Yeah, okay. which is also pretty clever. So what's he going to do? Oh. Five years to become a teacher. I can, just, I, I can teach, so why don't I just... Do it. Do it. Yeah, no, I get it. Well, I guess we shall conclude yet another... Wonderful. Wonderful, delightful Sunday story episode of What's the Plot? Woo! What's the plot? 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 What is it? What's the plot? I'm doing it wrong. What's the plot? I started on your What's bit. What's the plot? What's the plot? What's the plot? 